When you think of the phrase, the ultimate predator, you may think of something like a tiger or a shark, or maybe even that stray chihuahua that harasses you every single time you're trying to get back into your house. Good? Don't bite me. Please don't freaking bite me. But personally, with all my incredibly nerdy animal knowledge, only one creature takes that title. A fly. No, not a dragonfly, not a butterfly, an honest-to-god fly. A fly, however, with a venomous bite, a defensory mustache, and built-in self-riding gyroscopes that enable it to solo kill animals way bigger than them. These absolute horror shows are what are known as robber flies. And what do they rob, you ask? Lives. And I'm gonna break down what exactly makes them, in my opinion, the pound-for-pound pound most impressive predators in the entire world. First, let's address the elephant in the room. A fly? Really? How can the annoying little bastards that literally eat and breed and crap turn into such an epic hunter? Well, believe it or not, they have all the necessary ingredients to be a terrifying predator if you really think about it. If any of you have tried to swat a fly, you'll know that they pretty much go full-on Ultra Instinct Spider Sense mode and somehow dodge you completely making you look like a total idiot. That, or they, you know, die. And don't get me wrong, I'm something of a walking mass extinction event for any fly unlucky enough to cross my path. My record kill count in a day was 82, and I landed a times seven multiplier back in my heyday. But for every fly I absolutely obliterated, countless others would just matrix dodge me like they could sense what I was about to do before I even did it. How flies can do this are for a few reasons. Their ungodly reaction time that enables them to see the world four to six times slower than we do, and special organs called haltiers that act like gyroscopes, constantly correcting and maintaining the fly's position in flight so it hardly ever makes a mistake. Now imagine that fly you just whiffed on that sees the world in slow motion and has a built-in autopilot, turned around, grew to your size, and developed a taste for meat. That's pretty much what insects have to deal with on a daily basis in the land of the robber fly. Now there's actually a few flies that got a little fed up with eating actual feces and decided meat might taste a little better. There's some that look like your basic house fly, like the killer fly, having the fastest reaction time of any animal. But then there's the group Asolidae, sorry, Asilidae, the robber flies, whose entire body is designed for murder. These guys come in a variety of shapes, from the scrawny and pathetic Leptogastrinae to the absolute Giga Chad Beelzebub Bee Eater, which has one of the best names of any animal. A personal favorite of mine are the Hanging Thieves, who hang from twigs and leaves when eating their prey. I thought they looked pretty badass when doing it, so I tried it for myself with no success whatsoever. And I didn't even try to attempt their forbidden one-handed technique. Robber flies live on every single continent that matters, and these guys range in size from absolute monsters to damn near microscopic. These murder machines are so dominant at killing insects that nature pretty much put in a balance patch so that they don't destroy entire ecosystems. The adult only lives for a few months, so during the summer while you're enjoying a nice cocktail by the pool, every insect around you is living in constant terror knowing that it's robber fly season. So what exactly makes these guys a better predator than other insects like dragonflies, who have the highest kill ratio of any animal? Well, to dissuade all the dragonfly fanboys in the comments, let's all play a little game you can try right now. Go to Google, literally type in, dragonfly eating a robber fly, and tell me how many pictures of the opposite you have to scroll through before you see what you typed in. Yeah, even though dragonflies are incredibly accurate hunters of prey that's smaller than them, robber flies can consistently overpower most insects they come across, even if they're far larger. It doesn't matter if they're heavily armored, toxic, venomous, robber flies eat it all. They'll even attack a spider while it's still on its web. Now that's ballsy. I can't think of any other solitary predator that just completely outclasses every other similarly sized animal in combat. It seems like no matter what you put a robber fly up against, they'll win. Even against frickin' hummingbirds. In fact, the only animal that seems to regularly hunt robber flies are other robber flies. So why is this? Why is this fly so overpowered? Well, it comes down to a few incredible adaptations. 
We've already touched on their coordination because of their halt ears, but these combined with a shockingly complex neural system for an insect make them able to dodge and find paths around objects like no other. They're even able to calculate the trajectory of their prey and intercept it so well that the United States Air Force is stealing their tactics. And once their target is locked, their specialized long grabby legs wrap around the prey, keeping it far away from the fly. In the bug world, fights are usually won based on who bites or stings first, so the robber fly uses its long legs to keep any dangerous parts of its prey far away from the body of the fly until it can find the perfect opening to unleash its ultimate weapon. A powerful spike that injects neurotoxic venom that almost instantly paralyzes its prey. Then a quick injection of digestive enzymes liquefies the prey's insides and the robber fly enjoys a nice bug smoothie. Now if they're dealing with especially feisty prey, they deploy their ultimate tactical tool, a defensory mustache. Called a mystax, this bristly clump of hair makes it incredibly hard for any prey to try and stop the death spike from coming down, and it protects the robber fly from any stings or scratches from its hapless victims. Now this all sounds pretty overpowered, but these guys can also be really tricky. Next video in the series, I'm going to be talking about the deceptive robber flies that almost perfectly mimic their prey in order to get in close with them before just absolutely murdering them. And later, I'm going out myself to catch the largest robber fly in America and show you all just how big and powerful these amazing predators can get. So if you want to keep posted on my new and upcoming animal content, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.